Hello and welcome back to Triton Cup. I believe it's 56 here, which is a very large number. But anyway, so I, do you know what time it is? It is grand finals time. We are watching 1500 V-Bucks versus Please, for, Please Forfeit, both two very strong pickups that I am very excited to see duke it out. And we are starting on one of my favorite maps of all time. What are your thoughts on Museum Zones? I actually like it, despite there being something in the middle that you can paint that actually uh, kind of uh is annoying uh, for the zone to paint, but I agree with you, this is a really good map mode, or like just map in general, and yeah, and also <laughs> you kind of switch up the numbers, it's actually 53, not 56, but that's totally whatever, fine. Whatever, whatever. Yeah, it, it, Irrelevant. Numbers, it, numbers don't matter. <laughs> I know how double Elon works and I also know how to count. We're going right into it. 1500 V-Bucks, we saw them run a, this pretty much same comp, swapping out a Splash Neo for a V-Splash because Crab Tank is very good on this map. And Please Forfeit is still gonna stick with their comp, their crabless comp of a leader, a tri slasher, a wiper, and rounded out by a junior for some nice, nice paint here. 1500 V-Bucks is already one down. That stamper went down, I believe, to Zenith over here on the wiper. And Please Forfeit is uh, absolutely going hard, going to put as hard as I can getting this first cap even in the face of two crab tanks one of which just gets taken down lots of love for zenith in the chat and uh yeah they're going absolutely crazy here yeah like literally please forfeit got a really strong push off the start and we also see just like a lot of engagement between the players there's a lot of fighting going on we see that machine being picked up by that beautiful splat bomb by the junior I think because no other player has a splat bomb so it must have been them and we see also a Zipcaster on the side of 1,000, 150 V-Bucks, I'm sorry, 1,500, no, I'm just kidding. Um, and is also being picked down using the Zipcaster. And Please for Future just has a lot of control right now. They're really um, dominating this uh, map, like they're really dictating it. And 150 V-Bucks don't really have a lot of opportunities to go in. We see the stamp just kind of trying to get some, uh, get some getting some value. But this interrupted, and it seems like 150 Rex does get the recap, and right now Please Forfeit has such a big penalty. They probably won't be working off, but I feel like they could potentially do it. We see this Matana Wiper just being really uh, sorted out. They got picked off by like three players, and we see um, the tri slash just doing its best, but it's certainly being cap uh, picked off by the other slashing machine. Yeah, uh, 1500 V-Bucks, after that really, really strong opening push from Please Forfeit, they are finding quite a way to respond, really staggering Please Forfeit and making sure that they're not going to be able to leave. These ledges are so powerful for both the machine and the stamper. The stamper does get picked off, but not before we are approaching the 30 point mark here. Special's going out of bound, Crab Tank on one side, Wiper, or, um, Wiper pops that stamp. And uh, we saw another special out there from the other, and now Please Forfeit is back in the running and in terms of taking down points, but they are still two down. 300 V-Bucks has had a penalty applied to them, but we've seen them push from 0 to 70. We can certainly see them push from uh, basically 0 to 56 if they play their cards right. But right now, this, uh, the stronghold from Please Forfeit looks like it's going to start commencing. Yeah, they're really, uh, really strong right now. But 150 V-Bucks actually does get a recap, so now please forfeit penalty. It got high up again, and we see Aloha shark uh, sharking in that one spot of the map, getting a pick, which is really sneaky. And we see the crab tank on the side of 150 V-Bucks. Aloha gets picked off by Yeti on the splash matic We see Zipcaster just kind of flying off right there. We see the big bubbler uh, uh, utilized by the... Um, Junior, we see another uh, beautiful stamp kill, and we see another stamp kill with that throw. That was really beautiful. And Venus, right now, one calm down. <laughs> yeah, no, I cannot. <laughs> you cannot contain me, Weave. I said Zenith, uh, just going oh, out and getting I'm so sorry. so many picks. It's actually insane. Um, and like just the response. Already halfway to another stamper. They're going to be on the defense right now, but we've seen them come out of situations like these time and time again. They know they have time. They know that they can afford to take their time and really get special together and coordinate a nice push. Already getting a pick on the splash and the stamper, but going two down themselves. Right now, Aloha does get another pick, and this could potentially be a wipe if Aloha lands a shot, and that basically is. Voice so Wolfheart is back in the running, taking down their timer again. Uh, 50 points on the further penalty, but they're not really Really necessarily going for a knockout. It's a, it's a happy little consequence of just stopping, please, uh, or stopping 1500 V-Bucks 
from pushing, getting, uh, you know, locking them out and making sure that they don't have the chance to score anymore. As we go into this last minute, please forfeit does go two, three down, and 1500 Vivex looks like they're gonna have a chance, uh, one last chance to push again, but we'll see how that goes as we approach the end of this game. Yeah, the Zipcaster was just kind of, uh, staying on the left side of there, and please forfeit has, uh, some good chance to push back if they get some specials and some really good coordination. We see Aloha just trying to be a little bit more aggressive. One person jumps out into mid. We see the stamping used again. Oh. And we see a wipeout. That was really strong right now. And there's only 20 seconds left on the clock. And if 150 V-Bucks doesn't really get that much specials, then this could really be a strong game for Police Warfare and the first win of this finale's match. Yeah, there's really no coming back from a wipeout on this map in the last 20 seconds with just how long it takes to get to the zone, plus how long it takes to paint it. It looks like Please Forfeit is going to take a very decisive game one. Not quite a knockout, but it definitely had potential to be, and we saw how strong that first push was. This set is looking very strong for Please Forfeit, if I do say so myself. Yeah, I agree. I mean, they won against a pretty meta-heavy comm, which is already something that you should... Uh, Recognize because I feel like crap is just really a strong special and it's really I feel like an achievement to win against this sort of uh, comp and I feel like that's just something that you can admire <laughs> Yeah, if Please Forfeit keeps up this pace, I absolutely expect there to be a bracket reset, which uh, is going to be certainly exciting to see if that comes to it. But uh, 1500 V-Bucks, being on the uh, on the winner side means that they've gone through a lot to get here and they are, you know, still have quite a few chances to take things back. So I don't expect them to go any, uh, go easy anytime soon as we are going to go on to Splat Zones under the spillway. I, we talked about this map a little bit earlier, but what are your main thoughts on this map, Spy? I mean, I'm one of the three people that actually likes this map. I don't know why, it's just kind of my aggressive me having a, lo a lot of fun on this map. I don't know why. I mean, objectively, it's kind of bad, but I don't know. I'm kind of a fan of it. It's enjoyable, in my opinion. Objectively bad and fun are not things that can't coexist. Or rather, they can coexist, and they often do. I don't know, this map is very interesting. It's interesting to watch. It can be pretty stall heavy at times just due to the double zone, the nature of double zones where like a double burst bomb can neutralize the zone and then you have to take it back and it's a whole ordeal. Capping the first zone is only the beginning and then you have to get the other one. And then Undertow is also interesting because it's so divided down mid, you can be like five feet away from somebody and not be able to assist them in a fight because of that major blockage that great wall down mid and so it just plays interestingly in my opinion and it's fun to watch not necessarily fun to play yeah it just kind of depends on how you see this map and how you kind of play on it i mean i have fun on this map with my playstyle, which is like really aggressive but um we shall not talk about this right now we see uh just uh we see uh, the Neo Splash on the side of uh, 150 v Bucks again, so they actually went off from Double Crab and went to Crab and Tri Strike again. Yeah, no notable changes other than that. Uh, we This tournament, we've really just been seeing these teams stick with what they've been playing, not really making any major defenses, and more so looking to just play on the maps that it works. And I mean, it makes sense because Zones is just typically typically going to promote a similar play style. But as we go into it, it looks like Please Forfeit is already two down, and 1500 V-Bucks is on their feet and ready to go for a good start. Yeah, I agree, definitely. And we see also the um, the Tri-Slasher using its uh, inkjet to just kind of haul out some more space, and they really want to get this cap right now, as it is still early on the match, so they do have some chances to kind of back up again. And we see another uh, stamp usage uh, by the Spatana Wiper, but actually, please forfeit gets wiped out with this. And yeah. just like that, 150 Rex has such a good chance to push in more and just to gain a lot of more control. Looks like 1500 V-Bucks really chose well with their counter pick here. They know how to play this map and they can play it well. Able to push forward, use that stamper to, or that zipcaster from the stamper to really push in and disrupt all of the offense, all of the defense. They do go two down, which is going to probably give Police Warfare an opportunity to push in, but with double zones comes a lot of time taking to cap and a lot of ways to neutralize the zone. So it, I definitely could see 1500 V-Bucks being able to roll out fast enough to continue this push. It doesn't happen, but it, it could have. Yeah, I, I think it, that could have really happened. And we just see that Police Forfeit really is kind of conflict because 
I feel like they're just not really familiar with this map as it doesn't yeah. get played a lot, so I feel like uh, 150v Rex really has a good advantage here, as we saw that they've already picked this counter uh, uh, before, I think. Did they? Um, I'm not quite sure. Maybe in their last set. It's been a while since we followed them last, but uh, I think... I think it could work. I think they might have. But anyway, uh, regardless, it looks like the 1500 Vbox is going to be on the defense here, getting picked off. But that's going to be, uh, once again, I get commentators cursed. 1500 Vbox gets wiped out, and please forfeit is going to be able to really push in here, push in hard, and do what they, you know, love to do with that wiper, with that try softer. Just going in and getting picks is what they want. Unfortunately, uh, both the try and the wiper, the main two sources of aggression, are going to get picked off, but that leader staring down the zone, going to allow them to keep holding it for just a little bit longer, at least until this Bria bomb forces some displacement. Uh, looks like uh, Please Forfeit is going to lose the zone here. 1500 Bucks is going to apply a penalty very, very close to losing the lead here, but uh, it's going to be, it's still very close so far. Yeah, I, oh, that beautiful snap on that crab tank, though. That crab tank cancel was so good. That's just the Yoshal that we really know. They're really good with this kind of um, canceling the crab. I've seen that before, and it's really strong. And we just see that 150 Bucks. While having some good control, they have a big numbers disadvantage. Only the splash remains alive, and with that, one uh, please forfeit gets the recap. And one fifteen Rex does have a penalty to work off, but I feel like a please forfeit does have some good chances to get the sleep like that. And we see this Batana standpoint just kind of interacting with uh, the try slasher. They get a trade, which was really something kind of sad to see sometimes, even though it's kind of funny to watch. And 150 Rex does use some really good special usage. The uh, slashing machine almost dies because of that E-leader, but they slightly remain alive. And 150 Rex just really is starting to get some more pushing action. Yeah, it's only going to be that wiper left alive, just kind of barely coming out of spawn right on the zone now. I'm struggling very hard because uh, the zone has not been capped by 1500 V-Bucks yet. Please forfeit does not have a penalty applied. It's just been sitting in neutral for like a minute at this point. As we go into the last minute, we'll see if Please forfeit is going to be able to cap it back with uh, that two down that they just recently got, or if they're going to be able to just keep stalling it for longer and longer as just things keep happening and they're not quite able to take hold of it like they want to. Yeah, I'm just not really sure what their objective is right now because I feel like they just want to paint the zone, but at the same time, they like don't really care. But like that police forfeit actually got the recap, and they're trying to work down uh, their way to the lead, but I feel like 150 Rex just tries to kind of interact with that and stop them from doing that, with, especially with that tri-strike. And the, st the, st the stamp is uh, really trying to get into aggression mode, and they do get a, a, get a trade, though... Uh, 150 bucks does get the recap and please forfeit is down to square one basically again yeah with 10 seconds left on the board for them to take control of both zones things aren't looking particularly good they do have a numbers advantage and they are able to take control but do they have the specials to continue this do they have the resources and the time especially to just continue this push for so long uh, uh you know they have to get about 40 points with 20 seconds that they need to hold and over time can be very unforgiving. If they lose control of the zone for even a few seconds, the game can be over. They only have so much time, but they get a wipeout, and this is starting to look very, very dangerous for 1500 V-Bucks out here as they just are going to try to throw all of their specials at the zone, all of their bombs, all of what they have. The zones are stalled right now, but the timer is going to continue taking. There's two down on the side of 1500 V-Bucks, and please forfeit takes the game. Yeah, that was like really hard at the end to watch, especially because that Elyr was just trying to paint because the zone was neutralized. They were like really uh, on with uh, getting that lead. They were really desperate for the lead, but I can definitely understand uh, their objective right there. And that was a really strong match and I really didn't expect uh, for Please Forfeit to pop off so much, especially because it seems like it's a map that they don't regularly play, especially in this environment where the Splatoon 3 maps mostly aren't that good, so I feel like that's just something that is really, really strong to see. It was a far cry from the Museum Zones map that we saw them excel on with a push all the way to what was it, like 
five or six in the first few minutes there. But right now we're returning to a map mode that I don't really know what to think of. Slot Zone's Mahi Mahi Resort uh, from the counter pick from uh, 1500 V-Bucks. This is a interesting map that I've been hearing a lot of people are a fan of, but it's not quite found its way back into tournament map list. But uh, I'm interested to see what they're cooking. I know that the Eelers are gonna be very dominant. I know that if you can shark under those ledges, the Wiper and the uh, that tri slasher are going to be very powerful here, but it is match point. This is where uh, Please Forfeit has the chance to take it into a bracket reset. We'll see if that happens as both of these teams are sticking with their guns. Yeah, they really want to stick to this entire comp thing, and I can definitely understand because it's just something they're familiar with. But if Please Forfeit gets this bracket uh, reset, that would be so huge for them and it's giving them a good chance to actually win this. And I feel like Zones Mahi is really a map that we don't really see a lot, but some people actually find this map really good. For example, Prochara actually finds this map uh, fairly good. And Please Forfeit actually has a really strong opening right there. You see that uh, 150 V-Bucks are kind of being hauled out, though they do have some specials, and they're going to use them right away. We see uh, the Stamper, not the Stamper, the Stamp. I'm sorry, I'm switching up again, Weave. Please hit me. Um, <laughs> And just like that, 150 V-Bucks actually got the recap. Yeah, um, very strong opening from Police Forfeit, but it now the shoe is on the other foot, and 1500 V-Bucks finds it their chance to push in. Uh, wipe already on the zone, though. Players starting to move out. Bubble on the zone going to allow them a nice safe spot and a, just a nice little anger point there for them to really start to get their push going back in. Water has dropped. Uh, 1500 V-Bucks still in control of the zone. Three down on the side of Please Forfeit, and now it looks like 1500 V-Bucks are going to be starting to move in a little bit further now that they have more ground to work with. Yeah, and with this, this is really a good opportunity for 150 V-Bucks to uh, get this push really starting off, as they, as they do have two specials, and we see the machine just kind of shocking at the ledge, getting a pick, and uh, the special usage of 150 V-Bucks is really high right now. We saw uh, the crab tank, uh, wait, the, yeah, I, no, not the crab tank being used, I'm sorry. And we also <laughs> saw the tri strike but please for if it actually does get the recap, and, it's, and the crab's being demolished by that stam. Yeah, Hammer, once again, those buffs go hard, and now Wiper has a functional special. That Zenith is taking to full advantage. How many kills has that been? Is that four? In, the, in a series of, like, what, 20 seconds or so? Um, going absolutely insane. They're still alive, still kicking, still providing so much pressure and so much aggression for their team. Trash checks are going to force everyone off the zone, and 1500 view is going to recap here. But does, not all is lost just yet. This bubble is going to provide a great spot for the junior to hang out if, uh, you know, this raw aggression, raw rushing it down did not work so well against it. Stamper tries to go in with the zip cast, does get taken down, but there's uh, the timer is still ticking away. Police Warfit is gradually running out of time as this penalty goes lower and lower. And uh, 1500 Redux is really showing no sign of stopping here. It's only the leader on the zone, and that leader cannot push back in by themselves. And so 1500 Redux really has a chance to just keep on going and maybe end this early with a knockout. Yeah, and especially because 150 V-Bucks bucks does have some good control, it's not really that easy for Police for Fred to get back, especially because they still have some really high penalty, but really nothing is lost right now. We see some more hammer action by um, the Spatana Wiper user. I do not want to pronounce that right now because I failed to pronounce it in a break. And, and we see uh, another Zipcaster uh, by Warlock really getting some distraction going on and maybe getting a pick too. Ooh, yeah, we nice. see the pick on the junior. That was smooth. And now we're in the same situation that we were in about a minute ago. It looks like 1500 V-Bucks has a pretty strong hold and they still have about uh, a good amount of penalty to work through, but mostly they're just holding to prevent the other team from progressing and getting lead back. Uh, leader is going to get a nice pick, two beautiful picks, and going to make a massive opening for their team. But not all the members of their team are alive right now, and they're going to be forced back by that machine. Things are going down on zone, players are going down, but it looks like 1500 V-Bucks is still remaining on top through all of it and not letting go of zone even approaching the end of their penalty and a potential knockout yet again but please warp it does steal it once again we're at the same spot 16 points left 40 points penalty yeah and just like that 150 bucks got a wipe out they were really not happy about that uh, recap done but wait no wait yeah they were really not happy about a uh, please warp it almost I'm so confused, Weave, please. <laughs> Wait, no, it's okay, right, I'm, just, I'm, right. I'm sorry, really, I'm sorry, I'm so confused right now. Wait, we see the Spatana Semper fighting the leader, but they actually get traded off, the leader was not having it, they were just doing the tap shot battle. 
and we see some good special usage uh, on the side of Police Force Mid. We, we see the um, uh, Inkjet, we see the Tri Strike on the side of 150 V Bucks, and I think we also saw the Big Bubbler, which was some good cover up for any player that might interact with that. And the sloshing machine is just kind of being conflicted here, they're just kind of stuck at the wall, not really able to do anything. And we see uh, the splash just kind of pushing it off and getting some more kills. And 150x only has 8 sef seconds left on the timer, and it's only 10 seconds left on the clock, I just realized. This is such a big battle right now, and please for if it actually doesn't get the recap. They get the recap, but their future of being able to hold it is very uncertain. With only the wiper on the zone, they are going to go down. But that was a very interesting map. And 1500 V-Bucks does take their first game, proving that their counter pick was very wise. Now, that game was interesting. I feel like I was seeing double and triple. It felt like there were like five times where when uh, 1500 V-Bucks was sitting at 16 points left on the board, they would tick down, they would take it all the way down to zero points on the penalty, and then Please Forfeit would come right back and apply about 40 points. And that happened like two or three times, and my bird has been awakened. <laughs> yeah, I was so confused at the end. I was like, who capped who? What cap was done? And which team is winning right now? I was so confused with, with everything. <laughs> Yeah, I've, al I've alerted my other co-caster, my bird. So if you hear the noises of a squeaky door hinge, that's just my parrot. She's she's a she's an animal, man. Anyway, uh, we're seeing Splat Zones flounder for what the third time, fourth time, and uh, we already time. know your opinions. You like it? I don't. We don't really have to discuss it much after yeah. that. But we'll see if this is an, uh, this is an interesting counter pick from Please Forfeit, considering that they run the uh the e-leader uh we're wondering if they're they're gonna finally switch their comp up a little bit or if they have something else cooking i feel like they could i'm i mean maybe they won't uh, switch it up because we've seen an e-leader uh winning on this map so i feel like they're just really comfortable with this pick right now and i feel like they could stay with this comp yeah it's it's gonna be interesting to see what they decide to run here as we move on further and further this is once again uh we can have oh my gosh phoenix baby girl shut your mouth <laughs> <Video What? there. laughs> she's she's so loud right now i love her anyway we can see uh you know 1500 v bucks have the reverse sweep here and end things right now uh no bracket reset but if please forfeit takes one more game things go on Things progress, and we'll see how this goes. But 1500 V Bucks switching up their comp for the first time. We're gonna see a double machine or double bucket from them for the first time. Yeah, and we see the Tri Nouveau, which is a really strong uh, weapon in general on this map. Like, just the main weapon is really strong, especially with the ledges. And I feel like Tri Nouveau in general is a weapon that we don't really see that rarely. I feel like it's a uh, weapon that is kind of implemented into competitive play because it has a really good niche because it's aggressive it can put out a lot of kills and it's also it also doesn't get pen punished that much because it has the tactic cooler yeah and double fizzy is always a good thing fizzy bombs are you can never have too many of them i'm sure you can but right now already we're though we're seeing please forfeit kind of struggle to come back in Struggling to struggling come back in is a very common thing on this map, but it's not something you expect from a very aggressive team such as Please Forfeit. And so we'll see if they're going to be able to cap this zone once again or if they're going to struggle like they did last time. Uh, this could even be a potential lockout if uh, 1500 Reox keeps up the aggression. Tactical are going to come out, making it so where these guys can just not to worry about dying too much because they know they can jump back in. Zone is stalled for a brief period of time before taking right back down. And a minute and a half in 1500 V-Bucks is already approaching the KO. 10 points left, only about five seconds left. Two members down uh, and please forfeit is starting to come back in and could potentially get a cap here if they play their cards right. Yeah, and 50, I feel like 1500 Rebex is kind of being overrun right now, but they really don't give up. We see this Platana Snipper fighting for its life with a Zipcaster, but it's being picked off. We see another pick off by Glee Forfeit, and with that they get the cap, and they have a 69 penalty again on 50, uh, 1500 V-Bucks. Easy, funny number. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, funny indeed, and funny is going to be how it's going to feel to work through that, especially as Please Warfin is starting to dig their heels and, and get a stronghold going. We see the machine trying to come out on left, trying to provide a nice flank and uh, some distraction, and Please Warfin is two down, their leader is down, and so is their try. That's going to be kind of the aggressive part of the team going down, and with only Zenith left alive, we're going to see if they can take it back on the hammer. They get one kill, nothing more, and 1500 V-Bucks is back in control of the zone. Yeah, and we see also 150 V-Bucks is just really on and staying at this one particular part where they just want to defend the zone. And we see Aloha on the tri slaughter just trying to be a little bit more aggressive as we always see with the tri slaughter because it just has a really good kill power. But they're being kind of sneaked up by this Watana step, but they actually do get the pick. And we see just the inkjet, really good usage of that little jump height, which was really added, which it made the special somewhat good and we also just see the junior just kind of vibing and painting and they also got the bubble shoot just placed down on that second uh zone and we have a splatana battle but the wiper won this battle there's another trinuo being picked off and with that please forfeit has a lot of chances right now to maybe push in more or just to stay at this one place and just guard the zone because there is a flank option with a delayed wipe, that's going to be 1500 V-Bucks signal to push in further and further. Like you mentioned, that flank option does exist, but holding this ramp is so, so valuable. We've got the leader who's going to kind of be watching them from the back and being, you know, making being a good anchor and making sure that they survive. But when the leader goes down, everything goes to hell and it's only the tri slasher left alive. I think they might be respawning. They're actually uh, on the zone right there, just trying to, you know, get by any control as their team does go in. And my bird pops off yet again. And I don't know, it's, it's just been so difficult for Please Forfeit to have a nice established, really good push here as 1500 V-Bucks did in the first minute. They've just been kind of struggling to respond. They still have so much penalty to work through before they even think about getting close to the lead and with only a minute left in the match it's going to be especially difficult as their e-leader gets picked off by a flank. Yeah, Police Warfare has a really good chance at getting this lead right now. Look, they have a big a penalty to work off. There's only one person left on the side of 150 bucks. It's the machine. They're just kind of trying to defend themselves by any maybe malicing uh, person that just kind of wants to murder them blood-handedly and Police Warfare is just really off in going into this kind of more defensive option as we see and 150rex doesn't want that to happen they push it with a booyah bomb the tri slasher gets a pick the spatana wiper is fighting uh, so they can get some more defending going on yoshell is really being uh, kind of pressured out of the zone and 150rex does get the recap and with this please with it really is struggling with uh, getting this lead maybe as we see the tri slasher gets two picks and with that, Police Warfare doesn't have that many chances right now. They can't uh, get any more mistakes, but it seems like, yeah, 150 VX won this. We are now 2-2 two and two in this set, and if we're going to a Game 5, and if Please Warfare wins the next one, we'll go to a bracket reset, which is absolutely insane, and it just goes to show how evenly matched these two teams are. But like I mentioned earlier, if 1500 V-Bucks uh, keeps up with the energy that they've had these last two games, these incredible pushes, we might just see this end here in a game uh, game five. So we're excited, we're excited to see this. Yeah, like 150 bucks, they really want their V-Bucks, like chill. <laughs> yeah. V-Bucks are not Absolutely. that important. <laughs> Uh, you know, we see chat erupt with, uh, you cannot contain the silliness, and certainly the silliness cannot be contained for the first two rounds, but, I mean, I don't know, guys. It seems like, uh, 1500 Remix has done a pretty good job of containing it so far, so we'll see how that goes as we go on. Once again, game five, so, yes. so hype. I just saw in the chat the bird's comment the commentator is very insightful. I love this. I was, like, in the middle of the game, your bird was, like, screaming. I was like, that's so cute. We have a lot of things to say, um, including <laughs> step up and go potty and hi. Those are those are the words she says. Aside from these squeaky door hinge noises, um, top tier Splatoon analyst. I think they should have. I think they should have hired her for Nintendo official events. But 
Oh, and uh, we see the uh, the counter pick roll out. We are going to Hagglefish Market. I think that happened like 15 seconds ago. I'm not late to responding because I was talking about my bird. That would never happen. Um, this is one. This used to be one of my personal favorites. It used to be like my top one. I love how the stage looks aesthetically, but also it was fun to play as a backline player. But the more I got into it, the more I realized it's just a massive stall fest to get out of neutral and out of mid. And mid is just one big choke point. And the left and right flanks are good, but uh, not quite enough to make it feel like you're not just forcing, brute forcing your way through mid with specials. Do you have any particular thoughts on this map, Spy? I like this map, but I feel like the pole in the middle made it worse because <laughs> you have a little less uh, room to kind of interact and just kind of uh, have movement on. And I am not a big fan of the poles in general. I mean, the Wahoo pole is of course based because it's just too goofy. But I feel like they could have left Haggle fish zones without a pole. Yeah. I mean, it was the pole update. They couldn't not. So uh, <laughs> we're going to see how this E-Leader really does well. I mean, this was their last counter pick. The, what, kind of what they're pulling out. Uh, tiebreaker, as you see. Very hyped game five. Grand finals. We'll see how this goes as the uh, you know leaders coming out. We see still the same comp from 1500 V Bucks returning to what's more normal for them: uh, the machine, the double splash, and the stamper. We'll see. We're gonna see how the eater kind of dominates here, and if uh, Please Forfeit is gonna be able to force this into a bracket reset. Yeah, I feel like it's really um, interesting. Uh, you know. Uh is staying like uh, by Yoshell, not really like at the beginning they were just kind of being in mid and not on there we go. You know, the tent and they actually got a pick right now which was kind of cool like the positioning by Yoshell was really interesting in my opinion and it was it was very very good very good and we see a good a tri slasher inkjet kill done by Aloha and we see another really aggressive stamp output we see it th uh, they throw them but it doesn't really get that much uh, of value and 150 UX actually only has like two people down and please forfeit has a lot of chance of uh, getting into the zone uh, not in the zone into you know their base and pushing a lot more yeah the name of the game as an anchor is playing as far up as you can while not putting yourself in extreme amounts of danger and that's exactly what Yoshell is doing well it, it's it's made easy by this map's insane sightlines but they're still doing an amazing job of keeping themselves safe and just applying so much pressure making it so hard for 1500 bucks to respond to anything because if they move if they breathe that leader is going to be staring down their neck and so we're going to see how uh once again like even though 1500 bucks has the zone right now and they're quickly going to be taken out by Zenith. The Selenas cannot be contained as they get a triple and they will catalyst themselves into yet another good push here. Their penalty is still at 50. They are taking it down slowly. It's a big old penalty to work through but I definitely think that with this hold, with Aloha striking below this drop, with so many things going on with Yoshal watching, with Zenith I'm sure off somewhere doing Zenith things, we're gonna see some incredible things go on in this hold. We are approaching the knockout potential for this game very, very quickly, but the specials are gonna come out and put a little bit of a stall to that. Yeah, and we see this Splatana Stamper really popping up with the Zipcaster, but it's being picked off by the Splatana Wiper. We just see a lot of Splatana kind of fighting, and we see Aloha really being aggressive on that Flash Neo, and the Splash Neo is also being picked off. Now, Please Forfeit has a lot of chance to push maybe into the base of 150 Oaks, or maybe they just want to kind of guard the zone and maybe get some more paint to get their specials ready for a maybe defending kind of push. And uh, 150 Oaks really does need to push in soon, as nothing's lost yet, but I feel like uh, there's only two minutes left, and I feel like uh, 150 Oaks has some good chances to get this push back if they coordinate correctly. Yeah, but Please Forfeit has their penalty completely worn down 16 points left on the clock the stamp is going out does get a pick 500 rebucks does clutch it though back right as things would start to get really hairy two go down three go down uh on actually the side of 1500 rebucks so it looks like that push may be short-lived as that last member does go down it's only yoshell really on the zone facing uh going face to face with a uh a splash over there as the rest of the members of 1500 rebucks do start to file in picking if they're kind of kind of starting to get picked off here and the penalty every time it gets capped it just gets lower and lower and please forfeit gets closer and closer to knocking out 
Yeah, though Please Forfeit has a big penalty, I feel like it's just a really big back and forth. Now Please Forfeit gets some more points off their penalty, then they get the penalty off and then uh, 150 bucks uh, pushes in really strong again. As we see, 150 bucks did get uh, capped out, but the Splatana Sniper got a really strong pick on the E-Leader, but it's being punished uh, off of that uh, Zipcaster jump back. And we see the Splatana Wiper on the side of Please Forfeit really getting some more space and just painting a lot and I feel like right now Police Forfeit has some really good chance to get into a more aggressive that's position. Actually, as yeah, we that's see, that's they got a wipe out and now it's really up uh, up for all everything as there's only six points left and it seems like this will be the bracket reset of this friggin tournament. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, we are going to a bracket reset. Game 5 into a bracket reset into, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if the next one went into a game 5 as well. These teams are so evenly matched, it really just feels like it goes up to the map and whatever Zenith is cooking and whatever, just like the individual skills of these players is absolutely insane. As a, uh, as a celebration though, since you guys are so interested, I will be posting uh, Parrot Picks in the G uh, Dapple Productions general chat if you, oh, you guys yes. are interested as we wait for the uh, bracket to be reset. I'm excited for the uh, Parrot Picks. I, I'm, I, I like birds. <laughs> uh, let's see. Hey. But I'm so excited we're going to Wait, you can't send images. Bracket. This is so sad. Oh my god, no. Post it on your Twitter. Right. I am posting. I am posting bird pics on my Twitter. Uh, speaking of Twitter, you can follow me at Weef Slider. I uh, bird pics <laughs> go incredibly hard. I have some pics of her taking a bath from earlier today. Oh her my god, that's so post bath. Cute. She's wet. <laughs> I feel wet like feet. it would be it so cute to see a pair taking a bath. It's she parrot, is right? awesome. Yeah, she is a golden capped conure for anyone interested. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna try some. I don't find know bird people. types. <laughs> yeah, um, they little mango bird. I I love her. I'm just keeping uh, the Twitter update. I'm just updating like every second because I want to see that parrot. Wait, you said mango? Uh, she looks like a mango. Her name is. Oh, Phoenix. I love I love mangoes. <laughs> yeah. Um. You know, best best co-caster. I'm replacing anyone who I've ever worked with with her. She deserves it all, and she's chewing on her blanket right now. She's in a. <laughs> she you is. Can just kind uh... of <laughs> you can just kind of switch up, um, um, Pinky for her. Yeah, no, Pinky has become useless. But we are gonna get into it. We were too busy talking about my bird to talk about the fact that we're going right into a run back situation. Uh, uh, Hagglefish <laughs> onto Hagglefish. The bracket is reset. All the counter picks are able to be chosen again, and this one was just happened to be the relic of the draw going back to Hagglefish. So it looks pretty good for Please Forfeit here. But 1500 Remix kind of knows how it's gonna go now. They were getting pretty close to taking it back at some point, and so it uh, looks like uh, looks like they actually get the first cap off of this. They do have members going down, but they kind of know what they have to do to win now, it seems. Popping that crab on the right. Zena does get uh, the stamper Swatana on Swatana Violence here, but I don't know. It's, it's looking like it might be a much closer game now that these two teams have kind of felt, them, felt each other out. Yeah, and I feel like uh, we saw at the beginning that the machine was kind of trying to flank, but was uh, being picked up immediately. And right now we see just the stamp just kind of being uh, outrun right now. They got picked off by the sloshing machine, but that gets picked off by a beautiful snipe of Yoshell, as we know. And Aloha is really trying to be that kind of an aggressive fella again by just being a kind of pain in, you know, pain in the boot. Uh, and we see <laughs> 150 viewers actually want to push in right now because uh, Please Forfeit has two people down right now and we see the Swatana Snapper being a zip caster and getting a pick as well so now 150 Rex has a big chance of getting this uh, lead or maybe just a lot of points right now. They still have their Booyah Bomb at the ready and their Crab Tank which is going to do an excellent job at holding. It looks like Zenith there you know we've been watching them all set <laughs> commenting on how cracked they are and how cracked their hammers are and all that jazz but they got taken out quite early there. Yoshell is going to be trying to, you know, make something happen on the left, and how something happened, they did make, they uh, got a nice pick on the Stamper. Looks like, once again, though, the Hammer is going to get targeted with everything, but they managed to stay alive during it. They get two, they're going to continue to get more, as it looks like they're going to 
Get, get the thing oh on the paper as well. What is in the water, dude? And then last member jumps out, and that's gonna be an effective wipe. Yoshal already moving up to the front of the zone there. An incredibly vulnerable position, but when their team is in front of them and when they know everyone is responding, not too, too risky. Once again, putting so much pressure is how backliners work, is how they provide their assistance to their team. And so now Zenith over there taking an uh, unfortunate battle against a crab tank that they do end up losing. But 1500 V-Bucks is still in control. Even after that nice wipe, uh, Please Warfare is struggling to get back into the swing of things and back into a you know good lead position. Also, Yoshal just got a beautiful uh, tap shot kill on that Splatana Stamper being a zip caster. And we see another stamp by Zenith. Unfortunately, they immediately immediately get countered off by that splash matic but it was still a kind of uh, risky situation, but I feel like it could have worked out if that splash wasn't really hiding there. And we see the crab tank being used on the side of 150 V-Bucks. Please forfeit wants to work down on their penalty. The penalty is down. 150 V-Bucks just wants to push in right now because there are two people down on the side of Please forfeit. They have a lot of chances. Please forfeit gets the lead right now. They have a lot of chances to push in because there are two people down on the side of 150 V-Bucks. And Aloha, again, being really aggressive, just kind of sharking at that ledge at 150 Rex doesn't really have a lot of chances right now. They have to push in right now, but there are two people down. And with this, please, wherever it does, get the KO. Yo, some things change, some things say the same. It was looking very, very good for 1500 V-Bucks there at the beginning of that match, but you know, I think uh, it's, we can safely bet that Please Forfeit is the master between these two teams of Hagglefish zones. Very, very well played from both teams, but once again, Please Forfeit. They they know that map even even after uh, they had a chance to be kind of analyzed they, they just were not able to respond. I still want to point out how these teams have not had a major change in composition at all. They they're sticking with what they're comfortable with. They're they're all warm and all that, and they don't want and to take any chances on like trying something risky. I'd imagine. Yeah, I can definitely understand that though because there's a lot of uh, stuff going on. We see Splatzel's Mahi Mahi again. I feel like those are just kind of the counter picks that we're going to be seeing in this uh, set as well because we've just seen these in the last set before the bracket reset as well. So I feel like some counter picks may be the same as we saw Mahi Mahi and Hagglefish, even though that wasn't even a counter pick. Yeah. I mean. Once again, these teams are going to stick with what they're comfortable with, and uh, I mean, it was a pretty dominant win from 1500 V-Bucks on this map before, and so they're going to stick with it. Uh, don't mess with what works is their mentality. I don't know, though. I mean, it, they're, I'd imagine that Please Forfeit is pretty hyped right now. Getting the bracket reset and getting that first game, especially with the clutch win that they got uh, to get to the bracket reset, I don't know, I I'd be feeling pretty good, so their momentum is probably swinging pretty hard, and so I wouldn't be surprised if 200 V-Bucks is not going to be able to match it. Yeah, I feel like those are just the maps that these teams are really comfortable with, and I feel like those are just these comfort picks that they always want to choose if they just want to have a big opportunity to win, especially because uh, of a team like Please, Please Forfeit, who has shown them that they really can do a lot of stuff in this tournament. Yeah, definitely. Once again, these teams aren't going to mess with what works. We're going to see the same things. The the Slayer pair between the tri Slasher and the Wiper, the, the leader, going to be super, super dominant on this map. Uh, like, just providing so much pressure. Mahi is one of those maps where there are no, there's no cover. There's there's nothing you can hide behind. The sight lines are insane. But the crab tanks are going to be a really nice boon for 1500 V-Bucks. Please forfeit though, despite the crab tank, it's still going to be in control of the zone. Yeah, and uh, we see some special usage on the side of 150 V-Bucks with the bomb. We see the tri-strike, um, the Splatana wipers being picked off. There are two people down on the side of 150 V-Bucks, so now please forfeit can be a little bit more aggressive even though they don't really have that much of a special like they don't really have specials right now and we see Aloha again being really aggressive and Yoshal just controlling a lot of space in this area and we see that kind of uh, toxic mist also being kind of effective on um, the splash matic uh, Neo and the other splash matic is actually being uh, picked off too and Please Forfeit only has 10 seconds left on the counter they just have to paint right now uh, in order for them to get this really really smooth KO. The splash matic is being picked off, and with this, this was such a quick match. I feel like 150 V-Bucks is scared now. Yeah, no, if you're a counterpick that you won on before, if you 
you've been destroyed like that, you're not going to be feeling super good. You're going to be yeah. starting to get worried. You're going to be like, how are we going to respond to that? That counter pick was our best map. How do we how do we stop the absolute titans that are please forfeit as they go to uh, they're up 2-0 right now in this bracket reset. One game away from winning the entire thing after their loser like their big old losers run. I forget uh please forfeit. Yeah, they were knocked out round wait hold on they are knocked out in round two and they've had an incredible losers run and now they're in grand finals about to win the entire thing and splatoon 3 is gonna be splatoon 3 and we're gonna have connection errors in the lobby behind the scenes <laughs> love it yeah i love it too it's just a splatoon 3 we all know and sometimes hate no but like seriously this was i feel like this is doing such a mental impact on 115 bucks right now because a counter pick that they've won before is just being totally used against them and to the advantage of please forfeit. And now I would be freaking out mentally right now. I would be so scared for my life. Yeah, it's <laughs> they're just steamrolling. The momentum behind them has been absolutely ginormous. It's been incredible to watch them. They've been you know, really good players. A lot of triples on the wiper, a lot of really funny uh, tri slosher moments uh where they've just been behind enemy lines and able to just take advantage of the uh do they know moments it's just it's been incredible and i'm, I'm glad we've been able to follow this team for so long once oh again God, though, we're just, just just killing time by the way the the bird post is up on yeah. twitter uh reef slider I, I like reef slider but with a w uh be sure to be sure to go check that out <laughs> yeah or saw, don't. oh my god it's so cute it actually looks like a mango yeah, she's a that's cool. A little beast. She looks so primal. It looks really cool, though. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but she kind of has a primal look to her. But I enjoy that a lot. Yeah, um, parrots are fantastic pets for people who can have them and like actually put the time and the attention that it takes into having them. But the average parrot will go through three homes in its lifespan, so if you are considering getting a parrot, please consider adopting one and helping the parrot homelessness problem that is actually a major issue. Anyway, uh, Zookeeper mode turned off, back to Splatoon. We, I think, are back in the lobby, seven players just waiting on one more, the one I think that may have had the connection errors in the first place. Let's go. Uh, we're going, uh, we actually have not picked a counter break yet, I think. Yeah, okay. I feel like uh, right now 150 V Bucks doesn't really know what the hell they want to do because it, it could be the same scenario where they pick a counter pick that they won on before and please forfeit would just absolutely destroy them and uh, get this win really easily. So I feel like that's something that they really have to look out for, especially after this match. Huh. Okay, everyone's in, but I just also want to mention that they got knocked out by Blue Comet in the first place, and Blue Comet had an incredible losers run up of their own, making it all the way up to losers round eight, where Please Forfeit took it back against them. So once again, absolutely insane run from these guys. Just insane, insane. These guys are cracked. What the hell? Yeah, these guys are absolutely dominating everything right now. But it's also really admirable, in my opinion. So much. Ugh. We've been going for two and a half hours, by the way. I just want to let y'all know. If, oh, I'm starting to, if I'm starting to seem delirious, that's why. Okay, what the hell? We're actually going to the pole world. We are. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Wahoo zones. <laughs> Wahoo poll is real, by the way. Yeah. Please, uh, chat, please post Wahoo poll. <laughs> We're just gonna stop. Oh no. My, uh, oh, my team God. server actually has a Wahoo poll emote, and it's one of our most unique ones. Uh, we love Wahoo poll. We appreciate Wahoo poll. There is a religion. <laughs> Wahoo poll, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Once again, though, I'm not quite sure what this is cooking. Uh, from what I know, I haven't seen it been played in so long just because there are so many better map modes in this game than Splat, uh, Splat Zones Wahoo. It seems to favor E-Leader quite a lot, and so I'm going to be interested in seeing how this E-Leader player can dominate or if Please for or if 150 100 V-Bucks 
knows how to respond, if they know how to play this map, or if they're just going to go in for a Hail Mary and just trying to see what sticks against the absolute Goliath that is Please Forfeit. Yeah, they're going to go for, a, for an absolute Hellfire right now, because it's a map that really is only recognized by the memes, just because of oh. the friggin' pole, and we see, of course, uh, seen it absolutely popping off and getting two picks. Being, uh, but they are uh, being, uh, you know, picked off. So they got a lot of value out of that really aggressive playstyle. Yeah, uh, already Please Forfeit has a pretty strong hold. Going to be scoring 30 points in the first, you know, little bit of this match. Zipcaster is going to be at the ready, but Please Forfeit is all four up. Moving forward, getting uh, not quite any picks with that hammer, but just using it to move in. Aloha striking under that drop, I'm sure going to be taking advantage. I think that machine probably went down to them, but the stamper is behind, giving Yoshell some trouble, distracting them and hopefully just trying to make way for the team to move in. Unfortunately, there isn't going to be any follow-up on that. They were out there like an island alone, and now it's just... um. I don't know, interesting to see how these teams are going to be able to respond. 20 seconds left, by the way, even less. Each tick is less than a second, and 1500 V-Bucks is not quite at the zone yet. 10 seconds left on the clock, two down on the side of Please Forfeit, Bomb going out on the zone, and 1500 V-Bucks is starting their very long climb to hopefully beat Please Forfeit's score of six points. I was really about to say that Please Forfeit has a big follow-up for their push. And I was really, really scared that this might end right now in a 3-0 uh, uh, run. And really, it's just kind of the thing in competitive when there's always like this one spark of hope for the other team, where they just cap the zone and they get a really strong push, as we see. But, you know, the Spatano Wiper is still not uh, letting that happen. They, they have good pain output and they just get to cap the zone and also get a pick. As we just know, Zenith is really cracked with this weapon, like this is just absolutely insane. Yeah, for sure. Hammer gonna be going in. Not gonna be pushing too far up though. They know that if they, uh... Oh wait, that was in their spawn. Interesting. Um, they know that if they push too far up, it could be disastrous. They could wipe again. They could get, uh, give, a, you know, 1500 V-Bucks another chance to get a good push off. And that's not what they want. They know they can play it back a little bit easier and just kind of... They also know that, you know, if they even if they lose this one, they still have two more games to go through. So that's a big boon in their favor. Just the confidence that comes from that. The confidence of making an insane losers run like they've been through and being able to, you know, say that they're one game away from victory. A lot of relaxation, a lot of confidence comes from that. But it's a hype moment for sure as these players are dipping it on the zone and Zenith is still tearing it up. Some things never change. And really, this was such an insane match right now. And oh, that's oh my god, up. they really want- Oh my god, what the I didn't hell? even notice the timer. That's yeah, the game. Like, it was literally such a big fight over the zone because it was neutralized. There was a tri-strike. There were a lot of players in the zone. And I was like, what the hell is happening? And really quickly, again, please forfeit won this. With an insane pra uh, bracket uh, reset, they won this tournament by such a long run. Especially because they... Ha they were eliminated uh, off the winner's rounds in uh, round two, you said, right? And they had such a long run, and they won this with the total bracket reset, and now a three to zero. Yeah, no. Incredibly impressive, and that's that's a run for the books, dude. Uh, that's, that's something that you're proud of. Just the absolute resiliency, the endurance that it takes. I've been sitting here talking for two and a half hours, I'm, and I'm tired. I can't imagine going through that for, what, like, four? <laughs> That's yeah. just insane, dude. Congratulations to Please Forfeit, and congratulations for 1500 V-Bucks for being on the winner side of that and managing to take it to the record reset um, in the first place. Oh my god. The, good job. Good job. I don't even have any words. No words. Look at yeah, my... <laughs> Look at my bird pictures on Twitter <laughs> at uh, Weef Slider. Uh, Spy, where can people find you? Um, you can find me on uh, at Doctor Spy LOL on Twitter. And no, it doesn't have anything to do with League of Legends. I just thought I was boony, and um, yeah, I just talk about Splatoon or I just mostly I just retweet or something. I don't really, I just look through stuff and just comment sometimes on things that I find goofy or something. Also, please like the bird tweets. They're they're awesome. It was so fun commentating with you, Weave. And it was such a big dream. You're, you're like the entire reason I'm even doing this in the first place. Like, you're That's the one. 
You're the one person that inspired me to to start with commentating. I'm so aggressively mediocre. Uh, you're a little bit insane for that, but yeah, uh, absolutely great. As people in chat are mentioning, Ink TV actually just went live uh, like two seconds ago, so I'd imagine we're probably gonna raid them. But if if you don't join that from the raid, definitely go watch that because what they do over there is absolutely incredible, and what we should all strive to be as in Splatoon production. It's just go go watch it. It's in, it's insane. It's insane. Yeah. But that's gonna be it from us. After a very long run, after watching some teams rise and fall, that's gonna be it with Please Forfeit as your champions. Yes. Also, I, I have to watch it for not screaming too loud. It's like 0.30 for me right now. Oh, God. <laughs> like 12 a.m. Good night. Good night. <laughs>